What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're actually going to be looking at something a little bit different or doing something a little bit different rather. So so a lot of you guys have obviously been invited onto this channel, my second channel, which normally we do a lot of vlog, uh, travel type of stuff, just kind of like extra behind the scenes content apart from all the uh, haunted and uh, abandoned type of content that we usually do on the other channel. So for this one, I kind of wanted to look at something different. Recently, we went to Bobby Mackey's. It was me, Ben, and Yasko, and we had one hell of an experience over there to say the least. If you haven't seen those videos, I highly recommend watching them. I will leave the link to that channel, Exploring with Angelo, down in the comments below. So something about Bobby Mackey's that really intrigued me, um, there was a gentleman who was actually the first employee back in 1978 of Bobby Mackey's. His name was Carl Lawson. He was probably one of the first people to recognize that the building was haunted, that obviously something was going on, but evidently it continued to get progressively worse and worse and worse for Carl Lawson, unfortunately. Eventually, he ended up getting possessed by whatever it was that was inside the building that was obviously targeting him uh, physically, uh, mentally, ended up eventually taking over and... They actually had to have an exorcism for him. So there is actually footage. There's three parts of an exorcism that is available on YouTube. I have downloaded all the videos and um, this was a real exorcism that happened. They had to call in a uh, priest or pastor, I guess you would call him. There's actually a couple of excerpts that I have that's interesting and adds a lot to the story. Apart from the actual exorcism, we do know that there's obviously demonic entities. Reasons why are not particularly well known, which makes it a very interesting place to investigate, to kind of to kind of figure out what it is that's going on there. And there hasn't been any definitive proof or answers. And the reason why is because the original story of Bobby Mackey's actually started back in the 1850s, as we know. Um, a lot of people have claimed that Bobby Mackey's was originally a slaughterhouse, which we now know is not 100% true. However, there was a slaughterhouse on the property. Eventually, the slaughterhouse ended up closing, and supposedly a lot of people would come here and do sort of satanic rituals, sacrifices, that sort of thing. So that may be one reason as to why the property itself is so unbelievably haunted. Um, there was also a bunch of other stories, uh, like the story of Johanna, who was actually um, the daughter of one of the employees back when it was called the Latin Quarter. Latin Quarter was essentially owned and operated by the, the Cincinnati Syndicate, or in other words, the mob, the mafia, and they actually owned and operated the place, and Johanna, from what we know, basically fell in love with one of the performers of the Latin Quarter and became impregnated, and of course the father didn't approve of that and actually ended up murdering the person who impregnated Johanna, who was her lover, and Johanna supposedly was so distraught that she had planned to kill herself as well as her father. Now we don't know 100% if there's any definitive proof behind any of that. Um, a lot of it's just kind of a folklore story. Could be true, could not be true, we don't really know. Uh, one story we do know that's 100% true. There's some back backstory to it that may not be true, but which we'll get into in a second. There was a girl named Pearl who was actually uh, from Indiana, basically she's from a religious family, she became impregnated and obviously the religious family, because it was out of wedlock, didn't appreciate that. So out of secrecy, obviously I'm assuming the family probably didn't know yet, but because this young girl and her boyfriend or lover, whatever you want to call him, were uh, I guess a little shaken up, a little scared to deal with the family, they had actually decided they were going to send her to Cincinnati. In Cincinnati there was a friend of Pearl's boyfriend at the time, who was a dentist, or at least a, a dentistry student. He attempted an abortion, it was botched, didn't work out, and I guess the guy and the partner who did the botched abortion kind of freaked out and decided they had to get rid of her somehow, so they ended up murdering her, and in order to try and hide the murder, they actually dismembered her, took her head, and supposedly threw it down the well of Bobby Mackey's, the specific well that essentially gives Bobby Mackey the nickname um, Hell's Gate. And that's a lot of the reason why it may be so haunted. We don't know 100% sure if that's ex the exact, you know, correlation to it. But that those are the tales that we know. There's a lot of speculation that 
um, the two guys who did the dismembering and obviously the murder were, you know, some sort of sat Satanists and they were doing some sort of sacrifice and ritual, hence the reason why they took the head and threw it down the well. We don't know that for sure, there's never been any documented proof, mind you, it was like 50, 60 years ago when that happened, so we don't know. Um, actually, no, sorry, it was even way earlier than that. It was back when it was a distillery, so it was much, much longer, probably about a hundred years ago. Anyways, other than that, back to the actual exorcism itself of Carl Lawson. We do have a little bit of interesting information that kind of adds to the story, I guess. There's actually an, an article here that I pulled up. It's called The Cincy Pulse. Um, I couldn't find the live article, but somebody has an excerpt from what was written in the article uh, that was written about Bobby Mackey's. The article was written by R. Scott Teets, so I'm basically just paraphrasing here, just reading exactly what they wrote. It says, he remains convinced he was possessed by a spirit that haunts the building. I've always felt I wasn't alone. Lawson said, I get this sense that someone is always watching me here. Lawson was the first employee of Bobby Mackey's Music World. He grew up in a house that used to sit at the edge of what is now uh, Mackey's parking lot. He... He has worked in this alleged haunted building since he was 15. A spirit allegedly, allegedly took hold of Lawson during those years and wouldn't let go. People began to see a difference in him. Lawson saw it too. I had changed. I knew something was wrong. Lawson said I was on the path of self-destruction. In 1994, Lawson underwent a six-hour exorcism, which we do have half an hour of. I don't know why it's like three parts and each part is exactly nine minutes and 50 seconds. I have no idea why that is, but that's what we have to work with. Um, we're actually going to watch this video. You guys are going to watch it with me and we're going to react together. It was performed by Pastor Glenn Cole in an unused portion of the building that has since been torn down. Um, so I believe there's an area called the Monster Room. Now, when we went there, they actually told us the Monster Room was where Carl uh, was exercised, essentially. I believe there was actually a part that maybe was longer. I could be wrong here. You guys can correct me if you guys know the, the right information here. But it was in, like, that area of the building. I guess maybe there was another extension to it that maybe has been torn out. I have no idea. Doesn't really matter. During the ordeal, the former mild-mannered Lawson wildly cursed at the pastor, which I did witness in... The videos uh, absolutely crazy and I probably have to cut out a lot of the swearing in this video they said that the formerly mild-mannered Lawson wildly cursed at the pastor moreover he spoke in Latin and German languages Lawson does not speak at the conclusion Lawson fell to the floor hugged the pastor's legs and wept it wasn't Carl at all said Mackey who wasn't present at the exorcism but watched a video of it later Lawson said his memory of that period is sketchy but he does recall that during the exorcism he had a sense of dread like something that's time that's time was up afterward he said there was a great sense of release i actually prayed for help it wasn't it was sent to me lawson said i can never thank pastor cole as much as i'd like to so it's pretty interesting um now obviously maybe not obviously but now in this particular video um i mean you guys are going to see i don't even want to really spoil it if you guys haven't seen it because it is interesting to watch um, there is actually another excerpt we have here from a book. I know I'm just kind of like reading a lot of stuff off, but this is going to be very kind of dry and relatively raw, this video. Um, I'm not trying to make this anything special. We're just basically learning information about the case, discussing it. If you guys like this kind of stuff, um, let me know. Maybe I'll try and do more of it. I guess about like, you know, sort of crime scene investigations, um, mysterious type of stuff. If you guys like that, maybe suggest some things that we could look at too. So there is an excerpt from a book um, that was written by a Douglas Hensley. Apparently the book is not great. Now I'm not here to criticize the book. That was just something that I had read online. Uh, but the book was written about the exorcism of Carl Lawson, America's most documented true story of a haunting and exorcism. It's a little bit of a long story here. Let me just minimize this a bit. She slowly moved. Okay, so basically a little bit of context. Carl um, actually lived inside of Bobby Mackey's. Uh, there was actually an apartment which I completely forgot to go and check out while I was there. And basically, uh, because he was the caretaker, he had actually lived inside the building. So he experienced a lot of things. People said that he was so afraid at one point that he would literally um, lock his door shut with a piece of wood and keep a shotgun next to his bed. Not sure what that was going to accomplish against some entity that you essentially can't see. I mean, let's be realistic. Probably can't shoot ghosts. Maybe could. We don't know. I don't know. That's that's the great thing about paranormal and mysteries like this is that 
there is no right or wrong answer because a lot of it can be questioned, right? Um, which is something that intrigues me a lot and makes me wonder a lot about this stuff. So uh, the other thing too is that when he was there, he would uh, report stories of hearing things like the jukebox going off on its own downstairs, the sound of hundreds of people downstairs in the actual building itself in the middle of the night when obviously no one was there. He was completely by himself and I guess things just progressively got worse and worse and worse. This book is very long, there's like 200 pages here. I have a link to it. Um, I guess I'll put that in the video as well if you guys wanna read through it. Unfortunately, I don't have time to read through 200 pages, so I just have one excerpt here. Um, basically, the excerpt, the story includes um, Bobby Mackey's wife, I think her name was Janet, which I could be mistaken, uh, as well as Carl himself. So basically, she slowly moved over to the sink and twisted the rusty faucet. A brown liquid squirted from the tap for several long seconds before the water finally turned clear, which is kind of gross. She reached down and grabbed a small brown plastic bucket, placing it in the sink under the tap. As she stood there waiting patiently for the container to fill, a black gooey substance suddenly began filling rapidly with the tar-like plasmatic fluid, and the room became engulfed with a sickening 31 ammoni ammoniac ammoniac smell of sweat and piss okay that's gross the water pipes began gurgling and a loud banging noise coming from nowhere yet everywhere filled the room horrified janet okay so her name was janet started to turn and run but before she could move a muscle some veiled force pressed against her wrapping its invisible arms around the woman's waist oh god help me carl carl the unseen entity squeezed tighter against the pregnant woman's abdomen as if it was trying to kill her unborn child. The force swept down on Janet and violently shook her to the left, then right, tearing at her brain. The room began to spin and everything became a blur as the entity started choking her with yet another set of unseen hands. Janet kicked, screamed, fought wildly, trying to free herself from this blood-chilling demon as it lifted her feet off the floor and began trying to shove her head first into the sink full of goo. Holy crap. So I didn't even read this whole story through, so I'm like just reading it for the first time for the most part. Uh, the instinct to protect her baby turned into a bubbling violence as she struggled against the maddening inability to break free. The rage in her became a living thing, her face become red and blotchy with anger as she fought back with all her might. The light in the room began flickering off, then on, repeatedly at ascending speed. Janet! Carl's voice stretched out from some other part of the building. Hold on, I'm coming up. Carl had heard her screams from help just as he stepped into the main basement. He raced back up the stairs, heading for the kitchen to rescue uh, the woman from whatever force had appeared this time. Now what's kind of confusing, unless I just didn't see it, I don't recall there actually being another set of stairs that go from the basement of Bobby Mackey's to the like main area. So maybe it's just written wrong, or just I guess kind of written for a certain way for people to understand it, because I mean, they, they you literally had to exit the actual building itself from the basement and then go back around to the front door into the, the front part of the building. So I have no idea, unless there was obviously another set of stairs, not that it really matters. I think it was just the way that the, the story was written. As his words soared into the room, the unseen entity let loose, loose of its grip on Janet and sucked back into the wall. She crashed to the floor on her hands and knees. The light stopped flickering and everything instantly became quiet again as if nothing had ever happened. Carl spilled through the doorway, holding the pipe over his head like a sword. He looked in all directions for anyone or anything, but he and Janet were all alone in the room. Janet stood to her feet and dusted off her red maternity suit as she gave a blank stare at Carl, who was standing guard over her. Before either of them could utter a sound, a loud, nerve-wracking, pounding noise filled the structure from all sides and the voices. And the voices? The horrifying demonic laughter returned. The pots and pans that hung on the walls began shaking, and one by one, they sailed through the air past Carl and Janet, striking the cafe door and adjoining the wall. Now, that's all I copy pasta into my document here. Like I said, there's plenty more. We could probably go on for hours and hours about stories of Bobby Mackey. Like I said, I don't know if this is all accurately written or kind of sensationalized, um, but whatever it is, it is interesting, and um, if you guys want to read it, feel free. I have the link to it. 
Now, let's get into the itty gritty. Let's watch the actual exorcism of Carl Lawson. This is going to be really interesting. So from what I know, um, I'll be real with you for the video. I didn't have a chance to go through all 30 minutes of it, which is why I wanted to go through it now. What we do know is that the nickname of the demonic entity was named Charlie, so you guys are going to hear them calling out Charlie, Charlie several times. Obviously, the pastor is aware of the difference between Charlie and Carl, um, but just to give you guys some context there. So, let's open it up and uh, let's do this. Alright, ladies and gents, so I do have the uh, video here open. Um, now, just to warn you guys, I don't think we're actually going to see any, like, you know, levitation. Um, I don't know, I just think it's going to be interesting. Not that levitations don't happen. Let me tell you, they actually do. Uh, reason why is because there is actually a little bit of a story that I know that kind of confirms it. I mean, it is kind of anecdotal evidence at the end of the day kind of hearsay but I do know people who witnessed an actual live exorcism and they did witness the person who was being exercised levitating literally off of their bed which is kind of crazy but uh, yeah let's just get right into it and uh, review the exorcism of Carl Lawson because he knows that I've got something in me that's greater than him and I've got something in me that's greater than you Charlie you understand that You understand that? Huh? Oh, no. No. Carl's fighting. No, no. That's so little son of a bitch. You listen to me. That's so little son of a bitchy Carl. No. He's fighting. Carl is not that. Carl's a good person. Now you, it's time for you to leave. I try to keep him away. I try to keep him away from church. Well, ever since he was a little kid, all he wanted to do was go to school and pray. That's all he ever wanted to do. But I got him riding around here on his bicycle uh, one day, and he didn't know what happened to him when he found his $5 and back. I know he didn't know what happened to him, but you did. And he entertained you. Now, I don't really know what the context is that he's referring to about the five dollars and about somebody riding around on his bike um which is kind of weird and interesting in a way uh but keep him take notice that the pastor uh continues to call him charlie so he is like directly um going after this entity calling it by name i don't even know exactly how they know the name probably a long story but Let's continue. You're trying to rule his life, and I'm here to put a stop to it. You understand that? You understand that, Charlie? Carl's so fucking stupid. You understand that, Charlie? Yeah. And I, you quit telling Carl he's stupid. You hear me? You. Something funny also, uh, one of you guys commented on the main channel video, I think it was under part two, uh, one of you said that Carl looks like the older version of Ben, um, and then I was like, holy crap, they're right. <laughs> they, he literally does look like a, an older version of Ben. It's so funny. Me. Okay. Now I'm telling you, it's time for you to leave. Get out of here. Because you know what I have right here. Uh-oh. Right here. What does he have? And you know what it is. Stupid fucking bug. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you think. I'm guessing it's a Bible? This right here is inside of me, though. And you know it because you recognize it. You recognized it when I walked up on this property. Didn't you? Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the reason you don't like it. Because you know that I have the power to make you leave. Because this... God's word gives me the power over you. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Uh, right. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you leave me alone? You notice, if you notice how it's kind of like mocking him because he's trying to use God's power against him, and he's kind of like trying to like laugh. Please. Huh? 
It's time for Charlie to leave. Charlie. Seems like he's in pain. In the name of Jesus, Charlie, I command you to leave. I command you to leave, Carl. Yes. Okay. I command Charlie to leave. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command, I command Charlie to leave Carl alone. I command him to take Screw Anderson with him. Who? Screw Anderson? Who the hell is Screw Anderson? See, there's a lot of stuff in here that unfortunately is like completely out of context, so we have no idea. But I'm going to assume that Screw Anderson, and unless maybe I'm hearing it wrong, but <laughs> is some sort of other entity, I guess. Right now. Right now. Carl. In the name of Jesus, and you know. I love the way he said Carl. Because it so reminded me of The Walking Dead. <laughs> that it works. Just, just stop, uh, Carl. Listen to me. Listen to me, Charlie. It's time for you to leave. And I'm commanding you right now by the authority of God's word. I command you to leave. Oh, he's not going to like that. It's time for it to be over. Your little game is over. Stop. Your little game is over. Your little, Stop. Your little, Stop. Your little Stop. game. Stop. Your, no, you Look at the way he's me. moving. Like just the I'm way he's sitting you. on the chair. Don't tell me nothing. I'm telling you. Your little game is over. You've used Carl. You've manipulated him. You've done everything in the world that you possibly can. And it's time for you to leave. You understand me? So, so Carl. I'm yeah. so big. Son of a bitch that calls his mother to die. He'll never be in Newport again. And he'll never be happy. You listen to me, Charlie. Carl's mother was a good woman. And she's watching over him. And she is the reason that I am here tonight. Is because she directed things. You know it and I know it. And she brought all this together because she saw her son that was in a life of turmoil and you and Sam and all the rest of you have been hassling Carl. Well, there's another one. So we have another entity, I'm guessing, named Sam. So, so far we have at least three. And it's time for you to leave because Carl's going to have a life of peace. You understand that? You understand me, Charlie? Oh, don't try to get, don't try to get cool with me. Don't try to get cool with me, Charlie. I'm trying to. Don't try to get cool with me. Don't, don't try to deceive me because I, you're not deceiving me. You're going to leave and Carl's coming. I don't know if it's just me, but it kind of feels like the way I'm interpreting it anyways is that this Charlie entity is almost kind of like childlike um, in the sense where it's like his responses where the pastor is saying don't try to get cool with me and he's going I'm not trying to and it almost kind of seems like like a child like the way they would respond to, to something like that it's interesting and he's going to live a life of peace. You understand me? Don't try to get cool with me. Don't try to deceive me. Oh. Yeah, see? 
I know what I'm talking about. Miss White, I, I know that you've been deceiving Carl. So don't try to deceive me. I know you don't want to go, but I know that you have to. You know, you know, what's she going on now? Huh? You can't, you can't on now, Fonzo. Uh, I can't, I know you. I know how you operate. Alfonso? Because, see, I haven't been doing this for 17 or 18 years for nothing. Wow. And you know that I know it, don't you? You're not scared. Well, you don't scare me either. Now, well, uh, no, you won't. I'll settle down. No, no. No, you're going to leave. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I ain't going nowhere. Yes, you are. I'll never leave. You understand me? No, I, I understand what you're saying. You understand but me? But you cannot. You understand me? Man, the way he moved his hand there you for a second, me? I thought he was going to grab him. You hear me? Because I'm going to help Carl. I'm going to help Carl to live a life of peace. Carl's not worth... Yes, he is. He's not worth the lives it can cost. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. You understand me? Now, if you notice, he's saying that the lives he can cost, he's not worth the lives he can cost. <clears throat> It's an interesting statement to say, I don't know if maybe he's just bluffing, um, but would, hypothetically, would this demonic entity have the power to actually take somebody's life? I mean, I think that's a pretty valid question. It's kind of a very scary one. Um, I don't know. And I also don't know what in the sense he's, this entity is referring that it's going to cost somebody else their life if he ends up being removed from Carl. I mean, we do know what happened to Ben, but uh, was still very far from death. I don't particularly know if that would happen. It's not worth it. Now, it's time for you to leave. You understand? You understand, Charlie? Talk to me. way his movement leaving. is going like that. Leaving. 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 Yeah. Larry. Yeah. Leaving. Leaving, Charlie. Oh, here comes back up. Leaving. Yeah. What did he just back grab? Out. Leaving. Oh boy. Leaving, Charlie. Fuck everybody. Leave I think it's him, another Charlie. camera. Fuck everybody. Leave him, Charlie. He's fine. Leave him, Charlie. He's fine, man of God. Leave him. We've been here for a thousand fucking years. Leave him. We've been I'm here over a here. thousand years. So he does make a statement that they've been over, they've been there over a thousand years. So what exactly happened over a thousand years ago? I guess he's describing like the location of where Bobby Mackey is, if that's what he's saying, or he's just generally saying like, oh, we've been here for over a thousand years, longer than you have been human, measly human. So I, I don't know exactly what he's uh, specifically trying to say there, but... And he mentions, because that's the end of part one, he mentions, do you think Carl is effing worth this entire town? Like, what is he going to do to the town? What could possibly happen? All right, here we go with part two.
because I'm going to bind you tonight. How are you going to fucking bind me? Because I have something inside of me that tells me I can. I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to bind you? I think that's what he said. Um, that must be some sort of... I don't even know. <laughs> Something to do with exorcisms, I'm guessing. They call it binding? You understand me? Now, what the fuck you got? My lord's on my way! No. He's on my way! You bring him on. You bring him on. He's coming! And he's coming to town strong! And I'm gonna tell you what! There ain't a goddamn fucker gonna ever come in this place again and try to run any of us off! Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Tonight. Now he's saying he's been there for over 6,000 years, uh, which is interesting because, I mean, that's even before, like, the time of Jesus. Um, I don't know, man. I don't have to go nowhere. Yes, this body is mine. No, it's not. This body is mine. No, it's not. The fuck no, it ain't. Not. This go on, man. Carl. God. This belongs to Carl, and it's time that you left him alone. Well, it's amazing how the way this entity is talking about Carl is if he's like some soft, really, really soft loser, which is kind of interesting too because apparently Carl's, like we said before, Carl's demeanor is relatively, you know, very soft, well-mannered from what I heard or at least what I read. Um, and then he's like yelling at the top of his lungs like this. A lot of people have questioned the authenticity of these videos. I do believe they are actually very authentic. I don't see anything that's like too made up. I mean, the cinematography is not great, so why even make this up? I don't know. Now I'm telling you it's time Let's to continue. leave and Carl's coming back. You hear me? You understand me? You understand me? No, I don't. Well, you? Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. I do not. Yes, you do. You understand me? You're leaving. Carl's coming back. Now, I'm telling you, right now, it's time for you to leave. It's not time. Yes, it is. Don't you turn away from me. Look at me. Wow. Just wait my Lord. Lord. Look at me. Wait my Lord. You understand me? You see him? I don't care. I don't care. You know I don't either. Did he say... Now I'm gonna break... I, I think he tried to like... Oh, man, I don't even know what he did, man. You gotta give this pastor some credit, though. He's got balls dealing with this. Was he saying, where's my Lord? Where's my Lord? As if to, like, mock him. And then he says, oh, there he is. You don't see him sort of thing. Like, you believe in something you don't see. I guess sort of, like, in a way to mock um, this person's belief system. That's crazy. Carl back into his body. And you are leaving. You understand me? You hear me? You hear me? Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of Charlie to leave this body, and I call Carl back into it, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and on the authority of God's word, I command Charlie, I command Sam, I command every spirit to leave, and I command the spirit of Carl to take over this body again. In oh, Jesus. God help me. They won't let me. Leaving. 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 <laughs> Leaving. Leave him, Charlie. Okay. Is he back? Carl? Mm-hmm. Carl. Is this like OG Carl? Is he back? 
Carl. Carl. Take over your body again, Carl. Hear me? Just the Carl. sounds that he's making? It's Look at me. They're gone. Seems so like. Yes, they are. They'll Believe me. They'll find me. Believe me. They'll be back. Remember. Remember, you have to resist them. You understand that? You understand that? They're gone. Now they're gone. Now they will not come back unless you allow them to. You hear me? Hmm. I'm not going to let them come back in. I'm going to come to the church. Okay. You're not letting them come back. Okay? They're gone. Okay? They're gone. Okay? I'm telling you they're gone. That's what I was thinking. They're late. It's it's like Carl's Carl. there, but it's like a battle between Carl, Carl and these demons. You think you can't make them? Come on. Come on. You know I always late. Come on. Come on. You think you can't make them? Come on. Stand up here. Sit back down in this chair. Now I'm gonna talk to you. Huh? I didn't sit in my chair. Come here. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now I'm gonna talk to you. Sit down there. I'm gonna talk to Carl. Sit down there. Sit down there. Sit here. Sit here. Carl. Carl. What is he trying to do? Take me back. So he's yelling out, take me back, but who exactly is the one yelling this out? Like, take me, like, it's so confusing because you don't know who he is specifically communicating with at which point. Is this still the entities that he's, com com uh, is this still the entities that he's communicating with? Is it Carl? And why is he yelling out, take me back? What, like, who is supposed to take him back? Now I want you to listen to me. Look at me. Now they're gone. And I've told you before and I'm going to tell you again. It's up to you. You entertain them and they'll be back, yes. But if you'll quit entertaining them, they cannot bother you anymore. You understand that? Huh? Well, I'm not sick of it. Well, he can't have it. Wait, wait a minute. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. What do you say? Carl wants a cigarette? Actually, Carl, listen to me. I'm not a car. All right, I'm who are Alfonso. He's Alfonso? Oh, so we got to get rid of you now. Alonzo? Alonzo. Alonzo Walling? Alonzo who? Alonzo Walling. Alonzo Walling is one of the guys that cut that girl's head off around here. Alonzo? You want the what? You, you, you want the... It just, uh, just dig. Just dig. Alonzo? 
Are you seeing her heads underneath here? Yes, I am. They hung me and my friend for something that I did. It took both of us. That bitch had to come. It's kind of hard to see what he's saying, but from what I do recall is that the two gentlemen who, or we won't even call them gentlemen, the two men who killed that girl, uh, Pearl Bryan, I think her last name was, um, I believe, that. so there were accusations, there were stories, rumors, folklore, whatever you want to call it, that they were Satanists and they did do some sort of satanic ritual, which is why they cut off Pearl's head and threw it down the well. Carl always claimed that it was still there. I think he even found, like, her journal, or no, not her journal, but somebody's journal in the well, which is weird how everything was always connected to this one well. Um, again, this is all kind of unconfirmed stuff, but it's really, really interesting. Like, the way he's saying it, as if, like, he is this Alonzo Walling person who killed the girl, or was one of the guys that killed the girl, and said that they were hung for something they didn't do. It sounded like he said that, uh, which obviously they did do it, but maybe those two men were possessed too? Like, what the fuck is going on here? Man, this I'm telling you guys, like, the stories of Bobby Mackey's is just insane. It's so crazy. So you have no right to take over Carl's body. Alonzo. Hey, listen to me. You're going where Charlie just went to. Where my dad might be. He left here and went into the realm of the spirit where he's supposed to be. Now it's time for you to leave too. I'm not leaving. Yes, you are. I'm not going to see his pack of matches. Yeah? I'm just going to be a cigarette. I ain't car playing. You're not going to use Carl's body this way anymore. You understand me? You can use Carl anywhere you want. No, you can't. Yes, can. No, you can't. Because Carl is getting his life together. And you're going to leave him alone. You understand me, Alonzo? Huh? Now, I'll deal with you in the same rest. I'll, I'll send me off. I can send you off. Yes. Can you pray upon me? I can send you out of here. Let and you me go. go. Let me go from this world. Man. Okay. All right. It sounds like the entity of Alonzo wants to leave. And maybe he just can't. He's being forced by something. Then it's time for you to leave. I don't want peace. I want to go in the light. The light. There you go. I don't want to be here on this world anymore. Okay, then leave. Okay? Alonzo? I loose you from the body of Carl in the name of Jesus. And I command you to go into the realm of the spirit where you belong. Listen to the sounds he was making. I think that's coming. Carl. 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 Uh -huh. Carl. Uh -huh. Is that you? Uh -huh. Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Okay. You alright? What happened? Huh? What happened? You're free from it. Did it work? Look at me. Something that 
I couldn't do before. Well, I am your friend. I'm because I want to help you. Hmm. I, I, I can actually trust you now. I mean, there's not so many voices. There's just not so much things around me. It's just telling me what to do. Okay. Uh, now, let me ask you this, Carl. Will you quit entertaining? I'm doing my best. No. No, you got to make me a promise that you will quit entertaining them. you got to make me that promise. Hmm. And then you've got to live up to your word. A person is no better than his word. So I do think when he's saying you got to quit entertaining them, um, I think maybe Carl might be fascinated by the spiritual world, and the paranormal, and the pastor is simply just saying, like, if you dabble in this again if you keep diving into it um something bad will probably happen like this maybe worse who knows right um which is i guess why his suggestion is you know stop dabbling in it because it's just simply not safe for him obviously because he's very susceptible to what happened here um now i myself have had a sort of possession um i don't personally remember a lot of it but obviously we had a lot of it on camera very scary stuff nothing's ever really happened since then so hopefully nothing happens in the future again because that was some scary shit let me tell you you remember this a person is no better than his word if you keep his word and if you listen to me Carl I can help you, but you have got to quit entertaining these things. Now, will you do that? Make me that promise. Yes, sir. Okay, now I'm going to believe you because I trust you. Okay? Because, Carl, there is a love inside of me from God that cares about you. It's just a love of mankind. Because you need you, you, now then you can you can get your life together. Okay? Will you do that? Okay. I'll help you. I sure will. you'll quit entertaining them and remind them of this night I could tell you something that if you believe what I'm telling you hmm. that this is not by accident today this is the eighth month and the eighth day of the month now, you won't understand this right now, but you will in the future. The number eight signifies a new beginning. Interesting. You'll remember this in the future. On the eighth month and the eighth day of 1991, it is a new beginning in Carl's life. And it's not by accident that it was today. Not at all. There's seven days in a week. Follow me. Listen to me. There's seven days in a week, right? The eighth day, it starts all over again. That's a new beginning. A new week. The letter A stands for... So I think, I think the, uh, the pastor... I think he's doing the right thing, but he's also assuming that uh, he's completely gotten rid of whatever these entities are that obviously are... You know, after Carl, not always necessarily true. We'll talk a little bit about that afterward. Let's. We got probably about another four minutes, um, and then we're pretty much done. It looks like they're just gonna have a conversation for now, which is fine. 
Let's see what they say. are all gone, we want you to hold Glenn's hand and say the prayer at the center and ask for forgiveness. I want you to, yeah, I want to lead you in prayer. Because I don't think if they're still here that they'll do it. And, and, and realize that, Carl, that you, you're a new person, okay? Now let me have you And I want you to repeat this after me. You, let me ask you, but you realize that the blood of Jesus washes away our sin. You realize that. You realize the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in one mind. person, huh? He was the one person that gave his life for people he didn't even know. That's right. To exactly. Take away with the devil. Exactly. And you realize that the confession with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead, you should be saved. Right? Do you believe that Jesus was the Son of God? Yes, I do. Do you believe He died for you? Yes, I do. Do you believe that His blood was shed for your sins? Yes, I do. Do you believe that God raised Him up? Yes, I do. Resurrected Him? Raised Him from the dead? Yes, I do. Okay. Then tonight, Carl, is a new beginning in your life. Repeat this after me. Say, Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Right now. Right now. I come in the name of Jesus. I come in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me. I've asked you to forgive me. Wash me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of my sins. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I accept your forgiveness. I accept your forgiveness. And I promise you. And I promise you. That I will live for you. I will live for you. I'll quit entertaining spirits. I will quit entertaining spirits. And I'll live for you. And I'll live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay. Father. Father. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you. Jesus and God name. He's asked for forgiveness of his sin. I pray that you have heard that prayer. Father God, I pray for Carl tonight and I pray that you would strengthen him and you promised that you would never leave him and never forsake him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would strengthen him, make him that that you would have him to be in Jesus' name. We declare the peace of God prevalent in the life of Carl and in this place in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay? It's done. All right. Feel better? Mm -hmm. Feel lighter? Peaceful? But don't work all night. For God's sake, don't work all night. Get you some rest. Start living a normal life. Normal life is, is you know. I'm going to quit worrying about that right there. Well, yeah, but there's nothing that can happen to you, Carl. They can't do anything to you, okay? So, it was really interesting. Um, I mean, it appears to have worked, I guess. I'm not really familiar with what happened to Carl afterwards, but I do know he did die uh, about 13 years ago. He had some information on the actual location that he supposedly only kept to himself. Unfortunately, nobody else ever saw. Uh, like a journal, of, I believe Johanna, stuff like that. So it is interesting. Um, I do believe that the priest makes a hopeful assumption that it's all over 
but it could potentially not be all over. And the reason why I say that is I have a friend, you guys probably remember him, Frank. We actually went over to his childhood home and investigated uh, his demon, who no matter what he's done, um, it just doesn't go away. It Sometimes you do things and it temporarily makes it stop, but it does eventually come back, sometimes worse, sometimes not as bad, but it does happen. So, I do think this was very interesting. I'm glad you guys watched this with me. I hope you guys enjoyed it in a way that we were able to kind of review. If you guys have any insight on uh, this particular scenario, what you guys think about it, yeah, just let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys want me to do more of stuff kind of like this, just once in a while, just kind of laid back, review some stuff, you know, just kind of enjoy the the scene, I guess. Um, let me know. Smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye-bye.